Good morning everyone. Hi, hello. My name is EJ and I am back again with another narrated our time last video for us to take a look at and you know me talk about this particular project uh, in the hopes that maybe you could learn a thing or two from it. <laughs> so yeah, um, this project is very very cool for me because it's obviously a 3D project. I, I do sculpts all the time, right? But I'm mainly uh, a 2D artist. I mainly do 2D illustrations and 2D paintings. That's really my forte. That's what I'm good at. That's what I do. That's what I love the most. Um, I hardly ever do 3D projects, but I love to sculpt. Love, love to sculpt. Sculpting is so much fun. Sculpting is so much zen. And I love doing it. But this project is pretty cool because I never ever get to the point with my sculpts where I would texture them. Um, and I use the word texture very, very loosely uh, in regards to this project because I didn't really texture this particular character like in the traditional sense of 3D texturing. And I will explain that more later. Um, so yeah, I when I use the word texturing, it's very, a very, very loose definition of it, uh, the way I'm using it. But yeah. I mainly don't color my 3D objects. They mainly stay monochrome. Um, I normally put on just like a clay shader and do my render uh, with that. My 3D sculpt with a clay shader and then that's it. <laughs> I call it a day after that. Hardly do I ever get to the point where I would do uh, hand painted textures, which is what I did with this particular project. And this is the reason why I I had so much fun with this project. Like, I just love this project. And this is the reason why I wanted to do a narrated time lapse for this particular one because, you know, I finally get to the point where I have a finished 3D character with complete textures. Again, the texture isn't the textures in the traditional sense, uh, it's actually vertex paint. But again, we'll talk some more about that later. For now, let's concentrate on what's going on in the video. There's only about 20 minutes um, to this video and for a 44 hour project, it's a really long project. So obviously I'm not going to show everything that happened. I'm just going to show snippets and pieces of the whole process and just roughly talk about what um, I did. So let's go ahead and get started with what's going on right now in the video and what has transpired in the past few minutes obviously i'm sculpting a face i do believe the face is the most important part of any character i mean everyone gravitates towards the face first that's pretty much the first thing you look at when you look at a character right and so yeah um it just seems to be the, the most common sense thing to do is to start with the face when you start a sculpt and that is what i did i am starting with the face um I have on me or in front of us a, the, a base mesh by Three Dimensional from Sketchfab that I downloaded. Um, I've been wanting a base mesh like this where all the pieces of the anatomy are separate, like the forearm is separate from um, the upper arm and then the torso separate from the neck and all that stuff. And the reason why I wanted like a, a base mesh to separate is because I wanted the ability to post the separate pieces how I see fit, right? I, I wanted the flexibility of being able to post a character without necessarily having to rig them. Uh, I've done rigging. I know how to rig. Uh, I can pull it off. Not successful, <laughs> but I can do it if need be, right? Um, but it's a very technical process. <laughs> and as much as I would, you know, as much as I can avoid it, I will avoid it, basically. Uh, let me just put it that way. So I, I, I've been craving a base mesh such as the one that Three Dimensional have in his uh, Sketchfab page where it's all just separate pieces so that you know I can just post the pieces how I see fit and basically this is eventually what I did with this particular project right uh, right now I'm still concentrating on the face um, 
I, I really wanted to show you guys my whole process of like sculpting it and whatnot. Um, so yeah, the face is almost pretty much done and I'm about to do the whole posing thing in the next few seconds. Uh, I think this is what I'm about to do. Yeah, this is, this is the part where I start posing this character. Um, so yeah, I basically, I'm so happy that I got this particular base mesh because now I could just post my character just the way I want it without having to go through the rigging process um, and whatnot. And so this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It's just me taking all the separate pieces, moving it around uh, and whatnot, using the move brush, using the standard move tools. Uh, like right now I'm using the move tools and then I'm gonna go back into sculpt mode and move use a move brush to move things around, shape the muscles and whatnot. And yeah, this is basically what I'm going to be doing in the next few minutes. And really, I love this just because it's so flexible. Uh, I didn't have to rig it. Um, time wise, I don't really know if I'm saving any time doing it this way. Um, maybe I am of sorts because rigging can get super technical. Um, one thing for sure though is since I know for a fact that I'm not planning on having a finished product that's going to be used in animation, right? That since I know that the finished product that I'm aiming for is going to be just static, pose, um, something that could be 3D printed if need be. Um, since I know that that's what I'm aiming for and I'm not aiming for a character that can be animated then yeah you know three dimensional base mesh just works perfect for me because look this is just this is so easy all i have to do is just move some pieces around and whatnot and just have it to where you know i want my character to be and this is basically just what i did um so yeah but as soon as i have all my um my character pretty much post out, I slowly start to do the sculpt. Uh, I skipped the leg, I didn't show the leg um, because it would have made this video way too long. Uh, you can see that I've already pretty much sculpted the leg and now I'm beginning to work on the torso uh, slash the hoodie part, right? And you can see I'm sculpting it out. I've combined all the separate pieces of the torso into one object that I'm slowly sculpting into the hoodie and then of course I'm adding details and whatnot and just basically forming the general shape um so yeah and then after this part I'm going to start working on the arms slowly and then eventually I'll find myself working on the hair um I'm not happy with the hair honestly I, I don't think I showed you I showed in this video the process of or I don't think I edited the hair uh, sculpting process in this particular video. Um, I pre-edited this video a while back. <laughs> it's been a while since I pre-edited this. I think a month ago was when I pre-edited this video. So I couldn't remember if I had the hair sculpt on here or not. But I'm pretty sure it's not. Anyways, my whole point is that I'm not too happy with the hair and the way I sculpted the hair and I want to try to approach the hair in a totally different manner um, in my future projects. Um, maybe I'll do it the way Flycat does it. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not really sure. <laughs> hair is such a fun, fun thing to sculpt, but the base of it is always painful. Like initially forming that hair base is always so painful I'm trying to figure out how it's going to be especially straight hair because straight hair is such a simple form um so yeah forming it is always just a pain for me but like actually doing the sculpt like detailing the hair that's the fun part like i love i love sculpting the hair but anyways it almost always feels like such a long process and so i hate sort of love hate hate love <laughs> sculpting hair I guess is the best way for me to put it um, like hands down like I love sculpting the face the face is just like one of the most fun things that I love sculpting and I will sculpt faces 
you know, any time of the day. But as for hair, <laughs> I always try to do it last just because I'm, I'm not good at it at all. Anyways, going back to the process and uh, talking about what's being shown in the video, um, you can see that I'm almost, I'm almost done with the hoodie. Um, I'm doing the hoodie or the hood part uh, right now. That's about the last thing that I do with the torso. And again, like I said, I'll just start sculpting the arms and eventually I'll just have the whole head form. Oh, I totally skipped showing the arms too. I, I didn't realize I skipped the arms too but now that we are on the painting part which is my favorite part really and what I really wanted to talk about um so yeah I typically don't get to the painting part slash texturing part of any of my projects simply because uh, a lot of the process in 3d is gets so technical you know like Retopology is very technical. Rigging is very technical. UV and wrapping is very technical. Uh, texturing, especially photorealistic texturing, can also be very technical. It's not very flowy. It's not very zen-like. So there's all these very, very technical aspects of 3D creation and 3D character creation that kind of turns me off. So I try to avoid it as much as I can. But I've really been wanting just like a finished product for the longest time. Like I didn't want just my skulls to just be straight up, you know, clay shader. Because this is what I've been doing. Almost all my renders are just clay shaders up until this point, you know. And so this is the reason why I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and just get to a point where um, I have colors on my character, really. And... For a while, I debated about, you know, going the texture part, you know, the traditional UV unwrapping, you know, retopology and all that stuff. And eventually, I decided against it. Um, again, doing the whole retopology. I love retopology. Even though it can get very, very technical, I actually love retopology. It's about the only technical part of the 3D creation process that I love. UV and wrapping, I'm like, eh. Rigging, I'm like, eh. You know, I mean, I'll do it if I have to. I can do it. I know how to do it, but it's eh. Uh, retopology, I actually kind of love it. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's it was weird for me to say it, but I do. I do love it. But anyways, my whole point is that I didn't want to go through that whole process, right? And so I decided, you know what? I'm just going to do vertex painting. That's it. I'm going to straight up set up this whole thing as a vertex paint. And this is what I did for this project. You know, I basically what we're taking a look at right now is I'm doing a base paint, right? I'm going to have this base paint plus an ambient occlusion um, bake, right? And I'm going to combine those two in another vertex paint layer i guess you could say um and then i'm going to take that layer and then paint it <laughs> so i went through all this whole process of baking all the lighting um well not so much as the lighting because i didn't really bake any lighting information really what i wanted to bake was like this whole general ambient occlusion right like in my head I know that what I wanted my texture to be is that I want it to be just like a general lighting scheme. Light above, you know, coming from above and pretty much like all around, right? So that it, when I take my 3D object, you know, it could be lit in many different situations. I mean, that was my whole goal in this texturing. So I just wanted kind of like a general ambient texture. Uh, was what my goal was so I, I needed the ambient occlusion to kind of help me figure out where the crevices are and really I didn't even really need that because you know there's an option in in the blender's viewport where I could turn on crevices and then I could see where all my details are right I mean I could have just done that but I wanted the ambient occlusion to add a little bit of the shadow that that I needed um so like you can see on the face right now, uh, I just put a bunch of colors because it's all, 
you know, just like basic color idea of what I wanted the face to be. And then I combined it, combined that with the ambient occlusion. And then I combined all that in one layer. And then I ended up, um, basically smoothing it out. I mean, this is my whole painting process right here. It's just me taking that base paint and that ambient occlusion and slowly uh, blending them all together. I mean, you can see me do that on the hair right now where I'm adding some slight highlights, uh, painting them in. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the face as well, um, where I just combine all the lighting information and all the colors I've initially laid out and just kind of smooth things out to make it look very, very harmonious. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I love this process. This whole painting process is long. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's the best way to approach um, a 3D character creation. Honestly, I don't. I, I pretty much could tell you this isn't like the best approach. <laughs> in all honesty, but I love it because it's painting. It's like going back to just straight up, you know, painting blending the colors in um and whatnot and i just i love it you know when i when i get into this process it just feels like zen because i'm not really thinking i'm just in the flow you know and this is the reason why i love 2d painting more than than 3d um projects simply because i flow more 3d projects can get super super technical and so I get really bogged down with like the details and the decision making process that I needed to do in order to successfully pull off a 3D project. It's not the same like with 2D painting. It's just, you know, with 2D painting, you can flow. Um, and so that's the reason why I, I love this last part of this whole character creation process because it just becomes painting. Um, so here I am right now, slowly blending all the initial color information that I put into her, right? Um, since I have a generalized lighting scheme that's coming from above and around, obviously the crevices and like the under parts of her face are going to be in shadow. Um, so, and that's what we're seeing right now is me like blending out the shadow to slowly uh, fade into the skin tone. Um, you can see me work on the neck right now, slowly blending all those de all those color nuances on her skin. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna keep on working all around her face until I finally have this nice, very smooth looking face. Um, so yeah, this was such a cool project. I'm not gonna lie, I really, really love this project. Like looking back at this video right now and looking at me go through this whole process, I thought that this was so much fun. Because at this point, I'm just like zen, you know. I'm not thinking too hard of what I'm doing. I'm just, just painting and just being in the moment. So yeah, here's my roughness map that I put in its own color attribute channel that I plug into the BSDF. Uh, principled shader so yeah I mean my layout for for this is pretty simple it's all just a bunch of color attributes in their own channels there's a roughness channel I had did have a normal map channel where I was trying to employ this technique by Omar Farik Tosif and Cody Ginny but it didn't really work out very well uh, for this particular project so maybe in the future I'm not even gonna execute that particular technique um, but I did have that on here. Um, so I have roughness, uh, channel, I have a normal map, um, color attribute channel. Um, and then of course I have the diffuse one, which is what we're working on right now or what I'm working on right now and what we're taking a look at. Uh, so yeah, I combine all of those in the principal shader so that I could finally have my textured character. Uh, so yeah, this is all done with vertex paint, which no one ever really does. <laughs> this is a unique way of texturing an object, but 
hey it's painting and i love painting so this is what i did but anyways this project is almost done um so yeah i just my final words with it was that i had fun and i love this project so i'm looking forward to creating my more characters in this particular workflow that i kind of came up with for myself so yeah and there it is it's done thank you guys for watching it with me i hope you guys learned a thing or two from it uh i'll catch you guys in the next video good night mm -hmm.